Hi, I'm Mahmoud and today I want to talk to you about the basics of programming drums for your metal songs. This video was requested by a few people and I will show you 16 beats today that will work in most metal songs. Drums are super important in my songwriting and they are largely where I where I will invest most of my time during songwriting aside from the guitars and the vocals. I am using Superior Drummer to program this, but you can use any drum program. Cubase even comes with one called Groove Agent here. If you have a version of Cubase, you have this. Other DAWs will have something similar to Groove Agent. Maybe they won't sound great, but this is about songwriting and getting your ideas from here out into the world. Now, first, let's talk about the basics of drums. Very generally speaking, drummers tend to use their dominant hand, which in my case is my right hand, to count the beats. The other hand, in my case my left hand, is usually on the snare, placing the accents, and the feet are on the pedals, either uh, two kick pedals or the hi-hat pedal. If the drummer is playing the exact same beat, the dominant hand will largely determine the dynamics and the energy within that part. Generally, a bigger and louder cymbal, like a crash, has more energy than a hi-hat, and a hi-hat has more energy than a splash symbol. These choices will impact largely how the drum part feels, even if the rest of the kit stays the exact same way. You can also move the dominant hand onto a floor tom to make the part even less intense. Now, these are not rules, these are only the basics to get you into programming. I will show you some beats and what kind of sound they have. I will not be jumping into dynamics and velocities of individual hits yet. That's a topic for another day. Now, let's get going. Let's start with the rock beat. The dominant hand goes onto the cymbal and plays quarter notes on the counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'll put the kick on the one and the snare, uh, sorry, the kick on the one and three and the snare on the two and four. This is how that sounds. Let's do a variation of that. Let's keep the snare and the kick as is, but we move the dominant hand onto the crash. Feels way different now. This variation is really cool because you could use the same exact beat and just move the right hand from the hi-hat to the crash and use these same two beats for maybe a verse and then a chorus. Now, the halftime beat. We keep the hand on the, uh, the right hand on the crash, but we place the kick on the one and the snare on the three. Let's listen to how that sounds. This is what's called a halftime groove. Let's make this more metal. 16th notes on the kick, snare on 2 and 4. Ta-da! Metal. Let me show you a variation of that. We'll put the snare on all counts and move the dominant hand away from the hi-hat onto the right symbol, like here. Also, we'll play 8th notes on the ride. Here's how this sounds. Ta-da! I give you Dave Lombardo, the metal halftime groove. We will keep the 8th notes on the right and the 16th notes on the kick. We simply move the snare to play only on the count of 3. Here's how this sounds. Let's try a variation of that. Uh, the kick and the snare stay the exact same, 
The dominant hand, however, moves onto a bigger symbol, in this case the china, and plays only on the one and the three of the counts. Here's how this sounds. Now, let's try this one. We will put the kick on the one of bar one, and on the four and of bar two, the snare is on the one of bar one, uh, sorry, on the one of bar two, and the right is playing eighth notes. This is what I like to refer to as the quintessential Slayer beat. Here is beat number nine. This is the skank beat. And remember the first rock beat that we did? It's basically the same beat, except it's twice as fast. We put the kick on all counts, one, two, three, and four. Um, the hi-hat is playing eighth notes with the dominant hand, like we discussed in the beginning. And the snare goes in between every kick, which gives you this tuka, 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 tuka. And this is how that sounds. The origin of this beat stems largely from uh, old school punk music and has found its way into metal, as you all know. Now, let's do a variation on that. The skank beat in metal, same exact beat as before. The hands are doing the exact same thing, except the kick drum now is filling out all of the 16th notes. Here's how this sounds. Pretty cool. Let's take it up yet another notch. This is beat 11. This is a blast beat. This is, again, the same exact beat, except twice as fast yet again. So the kick is playing eighth notes, as we can see here. The hi-hat stays the same with the eighth notes. And the snare is filling in between the kicks yet again. Here's how this sounds. Before we dive into what I like to refer as the breakdown beats, here's one bonus beat that I sometimes like to implement just in case the other beats don't seem to give me what I need for the part. Um, I like to refer to this one as the snare triplet. Um, basically, it's just playing quarter note triplets on the snare, 16th notes on the kick, and the large symbol on the dominant hand. In this case, I chose a china. Here's how this sounds. It's a pretty cool beat if the other things are not giving you what you need. Let's dive into the breakdown beat. Here's the first breakdown beat. We have the kick following what the guitar is doing. Whatever it is, just put the snare on the three and have the dominant hand use a large symbol and play on all the counts. Here's how this sounds. Let's do a variation on that where the kick and the snare are doing the same thing, except the right dominant hand is playing only on the counts of one and three. Here's how this sounds. And here's another variation on that breakdown beat. I like to call this the breakdown slow variation. The kick is playing 16th notes. The snare is on the one of count two, oh, sorry, of bar two. And the crash, the dominant hand is playing on the one and three of every count of uh, the bars. Here's how this sounds. And one final beat, this is the Hammer Blast. Um, this is basically a variation on the blast beat that we looked at before, um, except the hands are both playing simultaneously. So both of the hands are playing eighth notes on the hi-hat and the snare respectively, and the kick is still following the guitar riff. 
Here's how this sounds. Uh, this can be really effective in a breakdown. Now, let's put all of these beats together in a row with some music, some guitar and bass accompanying the, uh, the drums and the beats. Um, and you can see how drastically these beats will affect how the riffs feel and how much they change the song. Please note that the biggest effect on how everything feels will be coming from the hands. The hands will largely determine if it feels fast or slow or groovy or less so. And the kicks are more here for intensity, especially within metal. If there's a lot of kicks, it will automatically feel more intense. All right, let's go. There you have it. That was 16 beats for your metal programming. If you have any questions regarding how to do more beats, leave them down below in the comments. All right, before we wrap this up, I just want to mention a few things that I think are important. Um, if you want to get good at programming drums, you should learn about real drums. So go watch videos of your favorite drummers and see how they play. Um, make sure you pay attention to how hard they hit things, how soft they hit things, pay attention to their dynamics, um, pay attention to the fact that they only have two arms, so don't go programming in eight arms, two cymbal hits and, I don't know, three floor drums or something like that. Just make sure it makes sense logically. Um, apart from that, there's great resources up on YouTube that you can go and check out, such as uh, Drumio. For example, um, they explain everything down to the littlest details and they have a lot of amazing guests that go and teach there. There's hundreds of videos up on YouTube by them where they teach everything and I've watched so many of them and learned so much. So I would advise you to do the same. And one other thing is play with drummers. Um, if you get the chance with your, I don't know if your bandmate plays drums, go see them and ask them how hard they hit certain things or, or what makes this groove sound good or something like that. So go and pay attention to these things and it will take your programming to the next level. I am sure of it. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.